Welcome to another writing workshop with a creative writing meetup in Altspace VR. We're as a group that creates a supportive, very creative environment for writers in Altspace VR. And we don't write in VR, we write in the real world while we're simultaneously in virtual reality in Altspace VR. And it's a great way to connect with others around the world. So we invite you to come join us. Because we write in the real world while we're in VR, we do ask that people mute themselves, they drop their headsets to write, and we recommend 2D access through a laptop or a computer, which is very easy in all space VR. Now for Go and Quest users, be aware and some other devices that if you take your headset off while you in order to write, it has a sensor in the forehead that will turn itself off. So we do ask you that you use either one of the settings to help control that feature, put a timer on it or something. Or you can use the old hack of putting a little black electrician's tape over that little sensor so you can stay connected. And I make a really loud noise at the end of our prompt writing session so you can hear. So that's just a little tidbit of how we work. So please come join us in VR. Now in this writing workshop, we didn't have any prompts. We did verbal prompts. So we had uh, people responding right in the workshop about our lesson today, which was seen through the nose, which is writing scenes that deal with sense and the sense of smell. We really wanted to explore the art of smell when it came to writing your scenes and developing your characters. So we explored scents that defined a time and place, the sense that a character smells and how that impacts them and builds character, helps to create your character and substantiate their memories and thoughts and things, and also the sense that the character smells like because our characters carry around scents on their body, either purposefully or just happens down. So what do your characters smell like? And then how do we create conflict by putting them in situations where there may be, you know, their, their body scents are different from what the smell of the environment is. Whoop, we had fun with this. So exploring the sense of time and place, we did f the same four places for every single example as a way to really challenge us to open up and see things differently. So we had a perfume shop, a butcher shop in 1920, and the streets after rain, and then a downtown city in 1980. So when we were looking at the sense of time and place, a perfume shop is such a, a very powerful scent kind of place. You, ki you, know, you walk in and it's a waft. So the, everyone talked about how overwhelming the scents were, how subtle they were, how conflicted they were when you're in a place like that where you have all these different scents coming at every single direction and how that would impact the character and, and help define a place. A butcher shop in 1920 was fascinating because many people associated with a very bloody, you know, meat rotting meat kind of smell, when in, in truth a lot of the butcher shops were kosher shops and or halal, and uh, not all, but many of them, depending on where you were, and again, where you were influenced the smells. And so many of them actually smelled quite clean and bloodless. They smelled like meat, but they didn't, or grease or something like that, but they didn't smell like blood because they did an amazing job getting all the blood per the religious requirements out of the animals. And so again, that, that ca created some great discussion about what those smelled like. And one of the fascinating smells is that um, I and some other people have spent a lot of time in what would be classified as third world countries or ones that adhere back to an older standard of, of cleanliness and care of, of their, you know, meats and things. And uh, I found that, um, burning feathers off was a faster way to pluck a chicken than it was to pluck the feathers. So a sense of burning smell was uh, something that might be smelled in a butcher shop that was surprised some people and was familiar to others. So think about the time place, 1920, and how it would smell in your writing. The Streets After Rain was also fascinating. And 
because it's a sense of, of place when you walk the streets and, and it suddenly it starts raining after a long dry summer. You have oil on the road that beads up and it's slippery and there's a, this greasy kind of oily smell and carbon monoxide kind of smell. Or maybe it's a clean smell that just rinses all that, you know, the air pollution away. And so there's a lot of discussion about that. A downtown city in 1980, wow, did this create some discussion because everyone's downtown experience for those that were alive in those times or who were alive today in downtown or familiar with downtown big cities. Uh, downtown didn't mean big city, but it meant a city. So what would that smell like if it was in Baltimore or it was in New York or it was in Miami or it was in Seattle or Chicago or San Francisco? All different downtowns became part of defining a place. But in 1980, defining a time, everyone pretty much agreed that it would smell like cigarette smoke, carbon monoxide from the polluting cars, because they didn't have all the carbon emission standards, and that it would also smell like garbage, because there were many cities that didn't have really good garbage and sewer controls and, and aspects of, of their city management. So that was fascinating. The sense of that the character smells influences the character in many different ways. So in a perfume shop, maybe the, the, you know, again, why is the character in these places? That influences much. But we thought about, we talked about how it would trigger memories of certain smells, of, of, of parents, you know, or lost grandparents, magnolia smell or a lavender smell would trigger memories of older people. And, and so it became about, uh, you know, what, what those memories were and, and what would be the stereotypical as well as anti-stereotypical aspects of that. Uh, the butcher shop was fascinating because, again, why was a person there and were they the customer or were they an employee? And what sense would they smell and how would they relate to those? The streets after rain or again, where were the streets? When was the streets? You know, uh, what time of the rain? Was it rain in the winter where the streets were clear? And then, it, you know, that triggered, you know, or, f or spring. Spring was a really wonderful one where it's spring after just a fresh rain and you could s suddenly f smell all the bloom and everything as pollution was cleared away a little bit or, you know, freshness. There was a lot of stuff that went in, especially triggering memories or triggering emotional responses. Same thing with a downtown city in 1980. And that brought up so many different layers. So think about your characters and place them in these really diverse places. Look for moments of conflict between the smells and, you know, what they're smelling and what they're thinking and, and what happens with that. But if you really want, con you know, conflict in your characters, what about the sense your characters carry with them? That was amazing discussion. So, in again, were the employee thereof? the place of the perfume shop or the butcher or were they there as a person coming in smelling of one smell and not smelling a, you know and then conf conflicting with the smells that are in these places the the downtown city brought up many many discussions i want you to really place yourself in in either what you assume 1920 would be or 1980 would be like or if you really were there in 1980 what do you remember a person smelling like? So what would your character smell like in 1980? And we came up with cigarettes, way too much perfume. I thought that was interesting. Hairspray and also hair dyes and permanents. Those were popular in those times and those do carry a scent for the first, you know, few hours or days after having that. Um, perfume shampoos was fascinating. Heavy perfume shampoos. Um, not very clean, which I found fascinating in my experience. There was too much bathing going on. But in other people's, they assumed that in 1980 there wasn't as much bathing going on. Uh, and some people said in 1980, it was if depending on, you know, what kind of city it was, there was, in addition to cigarette smoke, there was always this, this little hint of marijuana going on in the background of a city in the alleys that would waft by or people would walk by with a little bit of that scent on them. I thought that was fascinating. So again, where are you, you know, what does your character smell like to others?
How does that, infi- you know, impact the others that are around them? You know, is your character working in a butcher shop and they have to come home? Do they shower before they go home? Or do they go home as a family just used to them smelling like the, the meats and the blood or whatever it is, that the awful smell, awful, awful smell that was associated with it. Not awful, could be awful. But, or a pr- perfume shop, somebody works in a perfume shop and then comes home and then those smells. So think about, place your character in these situations and see what happens. And come join us in Alt Space at the Creative Writing Meetup. You can check us out at Discord slash, discord.me slash writing VR. And there's some great writing tips at writersinthegrove.com. But we'd love to have you join us in Alt Space, at Alt Space VR, at altvr.com. Thanks. <laughs>